All right, welcome everybody to week three of our Dream Builder facilitated course. Excited that you were able to join me again this evening. And for those of you listening to this recording, um, I'm happy that you made it uh, to listen to the recording. Um, I've been getting a lot of views each week. So I know if for some reason this doesn't fit in your schedule on Tuesday nights and you can um, recap the recording that works for people and I am just as happy with that. All right, so I've got a little updated PowerPoint for you tonight. You can see that um, the WWBC has three different client programs. So you guys are participating in our business training and counseling program right now. We also have a micro loan program um, that offers anywhere between $500 to $50,000 loans uh, to businesses that have been denied traditional lending from a bank. Um, and then last but not least, we have our artist development program, and we run that in conjunction with our Works of Wyoming store in downtown Laramie. And I'm not sure if I have any artist companies. We're going to dig into that a little bit tonight. So get your chat box ready, because um, I'm going to have some questions for you. So this facilitated course is six weeks. Um, so we are entering week three, almost halfway done. It incorporates that business plan tool, which you should have been introduced to if you're on track with the coursework um, in this last week. And my recommendation is that you dedicate anywhere between three and four hours a week. Um, this next week might be a little bit heavier than that based on the content that we're going to recover tonight. Um, but each week you will have an opportunity to chat with me in this facilitated Zoom meeting that we have on Tuesday evenings. Um, you can always reach out to me directly via email or you can give me a call if you have questions um, in off hours. All right. So our six week facilitated course outline. We've already finished um, all of the content from week one and we should have completed all of the content from week two. So for those of you that are on the line live with me tonight, um, go ahead and open up your chat window and give me a sense of where you're at in the program. No judgment, right? We're all on our own jury, journey, we're all on our own path, but I just would like to know, um, and you can just type in the last course that you completed. So hopefully most of you are typing in making your dream. If not, maybe you're still on planning your dream. Um, or maybe you're still on week one, exploring your dream, right? Um, maybe you're working ahead and you got a sneak peek at marketing your dream or pricing your dream. Again, no judgment here. Um, I just want to get a sense of where people are at. All right, so it looks like finished planning and getting ready to start making your dream. Other people have finished making your dreams, so you're on track with us on our six-week um, facilitated course. Terrific. Just want to encourage everybody to keep going. Um, and I also want to encourage you to just not get stuck in answering the questions, right? Sometimes these, the, as we go through this program, the questions are going to get more and more intense where you're going to feel like you need to stop and do some serious research in order to answer the questions. Um, and if you have that time to dedicate, then by all means, go for it. You know, I want you to do that. But I also don't want you to get stuck because you have an opportunity to go back and fill this in at the end. I think it's more important that you get through all of the content, that you listen to all of the recordings, that you hear from all of the entrepreneur examples. That's one of my favorite pieces of this program is where you get to hear from actual women that have started businesses and they talk about their own personal experience and kind of what rang true to them and why certain um, aspects of, of business planning made sense. Um, and so I hope you're enjoying those personal testimonials because I, I think anytime you can hear from someone that's done it, it's so much more powerful than just reading about it in a book. Um, and that's really the power of video education, I really think. And so that's why I love it so much. Okay, got a few more people says, um, still need to finish making your dream. Um, somebody's on exploring your dream. Okay, from week one, I'm glad you've joined us. I'm glad you're on it. Um, another person is working on the planning your dream aspect. Okay, so you guys have some work to put in hopefully um, tonight and tomorrow in order to get up to speed so that we can launch into week three. Thanks, everybody. Okay, so I just want to cover some of the information um, that was covered in the course content that I assigned last week. And one of the primary questions that got answered in that course content was, why do you need a business plan? 
Um, of course, I hit on this, you know, a lot uh, in the in the beginning when we first started meeting. Um, but I just wanted to line out the eight reasons why you need a business plan, why you're taking this course, why this is important. Because as you dedicate more and more hours to this, it's easy to get fatigued, and it's easy to just say, "Oh, I think this is fine. I don't, you know, I don't need to answer any more of these questions. I just want to go for it." So. I'm going to back you up and remind you that a primary reason for doing a business plan is to record and present the business information, right? We want a recording of this that says, this is why you're doing this. This is why it's viable. This is how you're going to proceed. And you're going to record that information so that you can go back to it. And you do this in all different areas of your life, right? Um, if you're a parent, you keep all kinds of recordings of your parental experience um, or even reminders of maybe what you uh, put in as a rule and what you're implementing. You know, now um, you go back and you reference those resources so that you can remind yourself why you're doing a particular thing in parenting. Um, it's the same thing in your business. And I'm sure you've all experienced this in your work life as well, right? We record our meetings. Why do we do that? So that we can remember why we made decisions to do certain things. So the same thing needs to happen in your business. All right, the next great reason um, is to explore new business opportunities. So often we start out with a particular idea and that idea can morph into additional opportunities or additional ideas sometimes it morphs into a completely different business. So I think I shared with you guys last week that I had an ice cream company um, for about seven years from 2010 to 2017. And I actually ran that business in conjunction with my husband and my daughter. We started that business primarily for my daughter because she graduated from college uh, with a degree in restaurant and resort management. And her original business concept and idea was to open a yogurt shop. And the reason that she wanted to open a yogurt shop is because it was 2010 and a really famous yogurt shop had just opened and was getting all kinds of attention on social media. And it was called Pinkberry. So I might be dating myself, but if some of you remember the Pinkberry phenomenon from Facebook and Instagram, um, this came out around that time and it was hot, hot, hot in Southern California. And they opened a location um, near Cherry Creek in Denver. And so she was just mesmerized by this um, business concept and by this idea and how cute the shop was. And she said, I want to do a yogurt shop. And so, of course, we sat down and did a business plan. And what we found in her market research was that a yogurt shop was actually a niche of the frozen dessert industry. And while we could offer all different kinds of frozen desserts, the most popular was ice cream. It was the true and tried tradition in America. And it was the most viable business entity if you wanted to do something in the frozen dessert space. The other thing that we found out is that a brick and mortar store, to open a brick and mortar store, this is hundreds of thousands of dollars in equipment and everything else. Um, and for our family, we weren't ready to invest those kinds of dollars in a business. And so we pivoted. We started at her original concept and idea was a brick and mortar yogurt shop. And we ended up with an ice cream food truck, 25 foot long ice cream parlor in a food truck. So um, that is what can happen when you actually dedicate the time to a business plan, because all kinds of different opportunities can present themselves and the viability can look different. Okay. Um, that probably covers the point on get clarity on your business, right? It's another um, one of our eight reasons. And also make informed decisions. Don't make a decision before you have the information to make the decision. Another great reason is to lay down that right path. Get that roadmap set up so that you're primed for success and establish your short-term and your long-term goals. One of the most powerful things that we did in that business was we did our cash flow projection for the first three years. So we knew the first year in business that we were going to lose money. And then we expected to make a small profit in year two and a better, more sustainable profit in year three. So we weren't like the other food trucks out there. 
we weren't freaking out at every single event because we didn't sell X number of dollars in ice cream. We had already planned for a certain amount of cash flow in year one, and we had the investment capital to sustain us through the first year and really the second year of business. So having the short-term and the long-term goals and then laying down that right path is key. Predict future financial performance. So I just gave you that example of the cash flow projection. So important. It's the reason that you should do business planning so that you can make those informed decisions. And that leads us right into seeking business investment. So if you're not self-funding and you have to go out and look for investment capital, whether that's from friends and family or even other sources, um, you're going to be prepared to do that because you have that business plan. All right. So hopefully you guys are all sold on doing this. <laughs> all right. So what we covered last week in your content was planning your dream. And we reviewed the different sections of a business plan. Um, and so spoiler alert here, there are different business plan templates. I can't even tell you how many there are. There are so many, right? Um, every uh, successful you know, entrepreneur turned author and professor or you know, whatever has come up with a different format for what a business plan should look like. And what I will tell you is as a business counselor, I really don't care how many different sections your business plan has. I just want it to cover all of the information that I look for if I'm going to fund a loan to a business or if I'm going to guide an entrepreneur to be successful within the first two years of their business. So what I like about the Dream Builder program is I think that all the necessary things that need to be in a business plan are there. Um, this just happens to be the way they outline the business plan. I'm good with it right? Um, if there's a different template that you like better, then you can deal with that after this course. Um, but for now, I would just encourage you to stick with the sections of this business plan that they're presenting, because at the end of the day, any of these people, bankers, investors, business counselors, friends, family, anybody that reviews a business plan, as long as you have all the nuts and bolts that need to be in that plan, it really doesn't matter what structure it's in. Okay. Um, the next thing that happened was you explored how a business plan can guide the decision making process. So again, in my own personal experience, it guided so much of our decisions that we made early on in the business. And it really just saved us a ton of heartache and a ton of money because we just didn't go down certain paths because we had done our market research and we knew what we were getting ourselves into. And then lastly, we learned how to use the Dream Builder business plan tool, as well as some additional tools and resources that are built into the Dream Builder program. Friendly reminder, I hope that you are answering your questions first on a Word document and then copying and pasting them into the business plan tool, because in case you have any problems with your internet connectivity, or for some reason it didn't get saved before you closed out your window, you're not losing any of that valuable content or what you're writing. So just make sure you have a mirror copy of that in a Word document. All right, so these are the sections of the business plan. So I just told you, you know, there's all different kinds of business plan out there, this table of contents is what you're going to cover within the Dream Builder program. So you'll have a management section, you'll have a marketing section, you'll have a section where you talk about your product or service, you'll then have an operating plan. Um, the operating plan is really, it's, it's that kind of boots on the ground plan that we talked about in the beginning. And then you'll have a finance section. This is where your projected cash flow is going to go. You'll have an action plan. I love that they do an action plan in the Dream Builder program because that action plan is what are you going to do in the first 90 days that you're in business, right? It's, it's what are you going to do to launch this sucker? Um, so often I get business plans that are really written kind of at this 30,000 foot level. And I think to myself, but what are you going to do when you quit your job? Like the next day, what are you going to do, right? What's your first activity? So this action plan really spells that out. And it says, this is exactly how you're going to launch. Um, I think it's super powerful. So when we get to that point, that'll be fun to talk about. And then last but not least, the appendix. This is just all the backup documentation um, that goes with your business plan. So charts, graphs, you know, digging into the specific spreadsheets of your, you know, cash flows. That's what's in that appendix section. 
All right, the next course um, that you covered or some of you got to, or maybe it's coming up tonight or tomorrow is making your dream. So in this, you learned how to differentiate between a product-based, a service-based and a combined product and service-based business. So again, my example of the ice cream business, this is a combined product and service business. We manufactured the ice cream. We then sold the ice cream on a truck providing a catering service or event service. So it was a, com it was a combination of both a product and a service-based business. And so I'd like to get a sense of your business now. So for all of you, if you can just type into the chat box for me, are you a product business, product-based? Are you service-based or are you a combo? I'm hoping at this point you've settled on an idea and you know. All right, so it looks like I've got one service company. I've got one product company so far, excellent. Got a couple combos, another service. I have so much diversity in this cohort. I cannot wait to read these plans to be so fun. Another service, great, 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 great. Another one is product, very good. Another combo, very cool. You can see I'm agnostic when it comes to what type of business people start. I'm just such a fan of entrepreneurship. I, I wish that everyone um, that I knew and everyone in my life had, had their own business. I think it's the way to go. Um, creates the most self-sufficiency for yourself and your family um, and puts you in the driver's seat of your own freaking life is, is really my um, opinion on that. So, okay, another couple service businesses, excellent. You know, I love service businesses because they can be fast. They can be fast to launch. Um, product businesses sometimes take a little more time and um, more investment, kind of depending on the products that you're offering. Um, but, you know, the, the benefit of service businesses, in my opinion, is that you can launch them fast. And sometimes it can be a very quick path to profitability to where you're able to pay yourself. Um, the downfall of service businesses is that continuing revenue is um, very elusive for you, right? You only make money when you're providing the service or when you scale that service um, and other people are providing the service for you and you're getting a cut. When you're in a product business, it takes you longer to launch, right? Because sometimes there's some product development or just work that has to go into developing enough of an inventory to sell those products. However, you have sustainable income potentially going forward. If you develop enough of a customer base, then it almost becomes like mailbox money, right? People are ordering products from you and you know, you're shipping them out. Um, so, and then of course there's the combo um, and you can sometimes have the best of both of those worlds, you know, or you have the heartache of both of those worlds, but either way you're an entrepreneur and that's what matters and you control your own destiny to a large extent. So that's exciting. All right, thanks everybody for giving me a peek into your type of business. All right, so what do we have coming up this next week? Well, we have a lot. So we are going to attempt to get through marketing your dream, pricing your dream, and selling your dream. Um, this is a heavy load this week. Um, this is probably the, the most intense period within the course. And because this is our first time facilitating this Dream Builder course, I really do want your feedback next week when we um, get back online together again next Tuesday night. And I want to hear, you know, was it, was it all right getting through all three of these courses or did you struggle and did you feel like you needed more time? Um, because in future cohorts, you know, I'd like to know, should this be more like a seven week program or an eight week program, you know, and should I space it out even more? The reason that I'm going for it this week is because I feel like if, you know, I have a good group of people that have made it to this point to week three, um, now you're really getting into it and you're ready to get into the meat of it. And often when you start with the marketing, it automatically throws you into pricing right? And once you're in pricing, it automatically makes you start thinking about how are you going to sell this at this price with the marketing plan that you've already created. So the three really flow together nicely. Um, and I figure if you're this far in, maybe you've got, you know, enough energy to just get through course five, six, and seven, you know, all within one week. So fingers crossed that everybody can launch into that.
So your week three assignment, it's going to be course five, which is marketing your dream. And here's what's coming up. You're going to discuss the importance of marketing. So that's going to be some video content um, that covers some testimonials and explains why marketing is, is important. You're going to learn about techniques to communicate the value of a product or service to potential customers. So what are all the different techniques that you can use to market? Um, there are things beyond Facebook, right? Uh, in the past, it used to be, there are things beyond television and radio advertising. Um, and so just depending on the type of business you have, you can really harness the best marketing channels that make the most sense for your business. So I'll give you an example. Um, my current business right, right now, um, my husband and I have a professional floor cleaning business. And one of the things that we have found is that marketing online um, using Google click ads and trying to win the search engine optimization game, it's just not a viable option for our business where we're located. Just doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, we're not willing to throw the thousands of dollars that we would need to to compete in our category. And so because of that, we've developed a different niche marketing plan in order to identify customers. And we've just taken a totally different approach um, and used different techniques where the majority of our competitors are really trying to play that online advertising game. And we just decided to go a different direction. And what's been exciting over the last couple of years is it's really working. Um, we're spending a lot less dollars on marketing than our competitors, and we're developing deeper relationships with commercial accounts and customers that are sustainable long-term clients. So you really want to think um, about where you place your marketing messages and the different techniques that you use, because identifying your target market and who you're going after is really important. And so one of the things that you'll hear in this upcoming course is, you know, um, someone say, well, I got asked, you know, who's your target market? And I said, everyone, <laughs> this is a telltale sign that you haven't done enough work on identifying who your target market is, right? Everyone cannot be your market. You can't possibly market to everyone, right? Even massive companies like Coca-Cola and Nike still have a target market <laughs> that they are going after. Um, when it comes to their marketing strategy. So that's one of the things that you're going to want to think about in course five. Um, they're also going to discuss the importance of positioning as well as branding. And they're going to have you create an elevator speech, which is a great tool to have in your back pocket. It really makes you think about what your competitive advantages are and why someone would want to do business with you. And then you're going to explore ways to share a story through advertising and digital marketing. So again, a little bit more about technique and how you can share your actual story. Once you're done with course five, you're going to move right into course six, which is pricing your dream. So you're going to learn how to set prices for a product um, or set prices for a service. You're going to think about the value that customers get from a product or service and the price that they're willing to pay. Okay, so quick example on pricing. Um, again, I'll just reference the, the ice cream business. We had pricing for catering events. We had pricing for kind of major community events where people were just walking up to the window and ordering kind of per cup, right? So our small size at that time was $3. And then we also did something in the wintertime where we took equipment and put it in concession stands in major arenas. So we were at the AA um, at the University of Wyoming. We were also at CU in Boulder and we were at the Pepsi Center on the club level. Well, on the club level at the Pepsi Center, we could charge $6 for one scoop, right? Um, know your market, know that you can price differently depending on where you're at, right? Um, but at the AA, we actually went $1 higher than what we did on our truck only $4 because we're still in Wyoming. We're in Laramie. We're serving at um, basketball games, men's and women's, um, and there still needed to be some value pricing there. And our costs, you know, were lower being at the AA than they were being at the Pepsi Center. 
<clears throat> so you're going to learn how to calculate your costs and you're going to decide on pricing that works for your business. You're going to review the difference between direct and indirect costs. And then you're going to consider what to do if your costs are too high. So this is something that will be constant in your business. Um, and if you don't have this habit in your personal life, then this might be a little bit more of a challenge. Um, for me personally, I am constantly looking at ways to cut costs in my household as well as in my businesses. It just kind of runs in my blood. Um, if you're not that person, then I encourage you to start developing that skill set sooner than later. Um, because as an entrepreneur, you always want to be asking yourself, can I do this cheaper? Can I cut this cost? Um, is this something that I absolutely need? Every single cost that goes against your business potentially lowers your net profit. And when you're a micro enterprise, your net profit is the money that you pay yourself with. And we always want to increase our own net profit and the income that we bring into our own personal household. And our costs directly offset that number. So looking at the costs, distinguishing and figuring out how to reduce them. And then last but not least, think about how your pricing fits with your marketing message, right? So if your marketing message is all about, you know, value and being the low cost leader, you know, in your market, um, but then your pricing doesn't reflect that, that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? I would always recommend um, that you market um, for higher pricing. I find, especially with women entrepreneurs, that we automatically undervalue ourselves and are always trying to figure out ways to um, kind of lessen our value or make our prices cheaper. And I want to encourage you to maintain your pricing and maintain your value, not only in your product and service, but also in yourself. So that's one of the things that I always work on with my female entrepreneurs. Okay. Right after you finish course five and six, we're going to dive right into course seven. And this is where we talk about selling your dream. So you're going to learn a little bit about selling. A lot of times people combine marketing and selling. Um, and they talk about it almost like it's the same thing. And what I'm here to tell you is that it's two totally separate things. Marketing is something, it's, it's everything that you do before you actually meet your customer or your potential customer. And selling is everything you do after you've met them, right? In order to figure out how to close the deal. So, so marketing and sales are, are really, um, they flow together. Usually the marketing, you know, gets you the actual prospect and then the selling is what closes the deal and enables you to collect money. Um, but they are two separate skill sets and you may naturally be gifted at one and not the other, or you may naturally not be gifted at either. And you have a lot to learn about both. So in this course, you're going to learn specifically about selling and how it contributes to the overall success of an entrepreneur. You're going to learn about why people actually buy. You're going to explore the importance of really looking beyond a single sale and the benefits of excellent customer service, right? How do I make this a customer for life and continue to get revenue and income from that same customer? And then you're also going to understand why every single person in your business, family, friends, anyone that is in your life that wants to help you be successful, everybody is a salesperson. So if you haven't viewed yourself as a salesperson in the past, I'm here to welcome you to the world of salespeople. And I am anointing you a salesperson tonight. Every single person that has a business is a professional salesperson. It's not a bad word. It's actually a really positive thing. It helps you control your own destiny. Um, I have lots of training and webinar courses on specifically selling skills. Um, so if you have an interest in that, reach out to me, let me know. I'm happy to send you that coursework as well. And then last but not least, you're going to learn how to make projections. And what I think is really important to learn in this um, course is to make realistic projections. I cannot tell you how many times I review business plans and look at these financial projections. And I think, how in the world are you going to pull that off? You know, especially in the market that you're talking about, right? So this was something that really helped us 
um, with our ice cream business is we got very realistic about how many scoops of ice cream we could reasonably sell at an event. What, um, what made the most sense? Because the idea that we were going to sell a thousand dollars worth of ice cream on a Monday, that's, that's probably not going to happen. Right. So you have to be realistic about um, what your projections are so that your cash flow projection is a real scenario that you can plan against. And so um, sometimes I even recommend that people have three different cash flow projections. You have like a quota, this is the bare minimum we expect to do. You have a goal, and then you have a big audacious goal. Um, not suggesting that you do that for this course, but just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. It could always be something that you work towards going forward. Okay, guys, so I've left some time for questions tonight. So um, I will open it up for questions and let you guys uh, punch some things in the Q&A. And I've listed um, my direct resources here. So my phone and email, if you wanna reach out to me about any questions specifically, or if you feel like you're at the point or you're getting to the point where you wanna have a one-on-one -on -one coaching call and you'd like to talk specifically about your business and your business idea, um, I'm here to facilitate this process with you and I'm your business coach for the next several weeks. So I encourage you to take advantage of the resource um, if you're ready for that. And then also Jonathan Howdy Shell is also a business counselor at the Women's Business Center. So if you would prefer to work with somebody different from me, I always encourage you to reach out to Jonathan. All of you um, in our Dream Builder cohort are now Wyoming Women's Business Center clients. And so you can work with anybody in the business center and we're all on the same team, wanting you guys to be successful. Okay, funding partners. Um, we've gone over this in weeks past, but the SBA and the Wyoming Business Council are our primary funders for the Wyoming Women's Business Center. So of course we thank them for their support and we look forward to the work ahead. And I'm just gonna check out the Q&A really quick. It looks like I've been thorough tonight, guys. What else is new? I don't have a survey for you this evening. Um, we're gonna wait on surveys until the end of this course. I think that's just a standard slide that I threw in there on my brand new beautiful looking PowerPoint, which we're really excited about. So I will go back to your week three assignment, marketing your dream, pricing your dream and selling your dream. All right, I'm gonna check one more time to see if I've got anybody, no. All right, quiet group tonight, other than in the chat. I appreciate you all telling me if you're a product or a service business. Um, and next time, um, I'd like you guys to start giving me a little bit more information about what your business is. And hopefully we are over that hump of being paranoid about our business because it's okay to talk about our business. It's we want everybody to know about our business. It takes a lot of work to launch a business. The likelihood of someone stealing your idea and doing it exactly how you would do it is like slim to none. And so um, I want you to start opening it up and giving us a sense of your business, especially because um, the next time we meet, you will have already written an elevator pitch. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about that next week. All right, everybody, thanks again for joining us tonight. And if you're a bit behind on our schedule, I wanted to encourage you to take the time tonight and keep going with the coursework because I kept it at 30 minutes. So you should at least have another 30 minutes tonight to spend on it as well as the time that you've already set aside and dedicated each week. Thanks everybody, we will see you next time.